Complete communities are welcoming places in which people can live and learn, work and play. They're shaped by planning systems, by urban design, and by the architecture of buildings. This presentation defines and describes architecture, or in simple terms, a building on public or private land with a specific program or use. First, this presentation defines complete communities. Next, it defines architecture and common architectural terms, the context for architecture, and sustainability. We consider why these subjects matter, how good architecture results in good outcomes for people in complete communities. Finally, we take a look at the role architecture can play in community change over time. When we say complete communities, we mean communities that include a healthy mix of housing types and jobs that reflect the needs of the whole community, promote equity, and include many choices for mobility or moving around. In complete communities, buildings and streets are thought of and designed together with the goal of creating lively, thriving places for people. In designing complete communities, we need to pay attention to both the buildings and the spaces between them, including streets and sidewalks, parks and public spaces. Streets are designed for maximum access, enjoyment, and safety for all people, whether walking, riding bikes, using buses or trains, or driving. Transit station areas typically include the quarter and a half mile around stations. These areas can be designed compactly. Mixing uses in order to save energy and water and can house riders and provide them and others in the community with a mix of services and amenities that they need for daily living and special occasions. New development, wherever it's located, should improve the physical, economic, and social environment. It should serve and include the full range of people that already live nearby and welcome others. Architecture can be defined in many ways. For the purposes of this presentation, the word architecture refers to a building with a specific program or use on private or public property that contributes to the built environment of the community. In the following slides, we will define and illustrate common architecture terms, including program or uses of buildings, and words that describe the different components of building design. Design takes into account the form or shape of buildings, their size in relation to other things, the elements that make up the skin or facades of buildings on the outside, and the materials they are made of. The program of a building refers to the use or uses to which it will be put. Uses or program elements can include education, worship, stores, jobs, services, or housing. The use of the building may affect how the building looks. The top picture is a railway station. It couldn't be used for any other purpose. The lower left picture is of a mixed-use building that can include a variety of commercial or retail space on the ground floor and living spaces on the upper floors. The lower right picture shows a pharmacy opening onto the street with space for living above. We use a number of terms to describe the design of buildings. Form refers to the building object itself or the mass of the building. Space exists between buildings and is enclosed by buildings. At Pershing Square in Los Angeles, California, shown in this picture, the bell tower in the center is the form. The space surrounds this form and is defined by surrounding buildings or structures edging the site and the office buildings behind. The top picture shows a building with a strong form silhouetted against the space of the sky. The image on the lower left shows the composition that can be created by a strong roof form and square building volume below and a staircase form leading from the street to the building. On the lower right, the towers on either side of the street create a gateway from the space between them. Spaces in and around buildings can be solid or full or empty. Open or empty elements in buildings can also be windows and door openings. In this image, solid areas and open areas in the building are clearly visible. The view into the building is closed off to the viewer from the street on the right and open to the viewer from the street on the left. 
Solid and open areas on buildings can either encourage or discourage views into them as seen in the upper left photo and help or hinder those on the inside to see out and provide eyes on the street. Openings in solid areas of buildings, as seen on the lower left, can let sunlight through to the ground and cast interesting shadows. On the lower right, solid forms stretching over narrow columns can create gathering space below. The scale and proportion of buildings is seen relative to other things around it, such as other buildings or a person. One building can complement or overpower the building sitting next to it, in part depending on their relative scale. These binoculars are larger than life, or scaled up, to compete with the buildings around them and create visual surprise for the viewer. Consistent scale is often important in communities. The scale of all the structures in these buildings is small, and the scale of the buildings next to each other is similar, all at a very human scale. The term composition refers to the way in which elements of single buildings or buildings next to each other are composed or arranged in relationship to each other. In the composition of this building, symmetrical elements are balanced evenly on either side of an axis or center line that can be either horizontal, parallel to the ground, or vertical, perpendicular to the ground. At Union Station in Los Angeles, California, the symmetry of the roof line in the main hall of the building reinforces its scale and grandeur. The balconies along the face of the building in this picture are both repeated and placed in a consistent or rhythmic array. The rhythm of elements along a building face can be either consistent or changing. Building forms or masses arranged in a hierarchy can draw the eye to certain elements of the building and allow other elements to support or lead the eye away from an important element. Buildings are made of a variety of materials of different textures or surface qualities. Different materials with different textures can result in a variation of light and dark patterns on buildings, different reflections, or smooth or rough textures. The different elements of a building's face are clearly expressed, creating interest and order, which gives the building face liveliness and depth. Articulation can enhance the way light plays over a building face. The columns, balcony railings, window casings, and decorations on the front of the building in this photo all contribute to its articulation. Articulation can also be seen in the treatment of building entries, as on the upper left. They may be either recessed in or projected out, Balconies, windows, and storefronts contribute to the street wall that a building creates, an edge along the street that can make the street more interesting and a better place for people to walk. The context for architecture may be physical or cultural. A building may be appropriate in one physical or cultural context and inappropriate in another, based on its physical characteristics and its intended purpose. Adding a high-rise office tower in this street of painted ladies, Victorian-era homes, would be inappropriate in this context. Architectural style is the design language and elements used to classify and express the design of buildings according to their appearance, structure, materials, and historic period. The building in the image to the left is described as the Googie architectural style of the mid-20th century. The image to the right is a building in the more traditional Cape Dutch style. Both buildings are restaurants. These images show two different styles of cathedrals in Los Angeles. The one on the left is a very modern style built in 2002, and the one on the right is a mission style from the 1800s. In designing architectural fabric buildings, architects identify characteristics of the surrounding environment and then follow those patterns in the building's architecture. Architectural icon buildings, like the Walt Disney Concert Hall shown here, may have nothing to do with their context. They stand out and are set apart from their context. Here we see a number of fabric buildings, consistent in size and materials, contributing to the environment for the iconic museum building in the middle. The museum in the middle draws the eye to it, while the surrounding buildings do not. Fabric buildings like this one, though more modern in design than the ones around it, can still sit comfortably in their historic surroundings. Historic buildings are original to their place and time. The Parthenon in Greece, shown on the left, is a good example. 
The building on the right, in contrast, is a romantic recreation of a building. This is an example of historical architecture that attempts to imitate the past. The image on the top right depicts modern architecture, which uses modern bay windows to refer to historic protruding window forms in the traditional building on the left. In contrast, the building on the lower right was originally built as a tire factory. It merely imitates buildings like the historic structure on the left, but in a very different place and time. The sustainable approach to designing buildings includes strategies that preserve or even improve the environment, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and conserve or restore natural resources, including energy and water. Building location can affect how much energy buildings use, as well as the choices people have in transportation, which affects energy use and pollution. Sustainable building sites include water-wise and locally appropriate landscaping, and water conservation strategies. Buildings can be certified as green or healthy using a variety of rating systems. Materials used in buildings can have a big impact on the environment, energy use, and the health and well-being of the building's occupants. Architecture affects the lives of all of us living in communities. High-quality architecture can improve quality of life. Designing buildings to serve the wide range of people living in our communities can help ensure equitable access to housing, services, and amenities. Architecture designed with sustainability in mind can have a positive impact on our environment that can benefit us all. Incorporating healthy features in buildings and communities can improve physical, mental, and social well-being. Complete communities connect people and places and encourage interaction between people. Complete communities also provide people with choices and ways to get around, including walking and biking. Complete communities also create economic, environmental, social, and physical value. Finally, complete communities can serve our precious environmental, social, and cultural resources. They enhance the world, instead of making negative impacts on it. This typical street can be enhanced over time to become a more desirable place for people to live and work. In terms of mobility or ways to move around in a neighborhood, streets can be transformed by widening sidewalks for people walking and adding safe bike facilities. Adding street trees can enhance the community's environment by providing shade and reducing energy use in buildings. Replacing parking lots with structures, even temporary structures like the one seen in this image, make the street a more interesting place to walk and provides a reason for people to be on the street and interacting with each other and their community. Temporary structures can eventually turn into permanent buildings. Development can spread on both sides of the street to enhance it further and complete the community. Ideally, new development includes housing that serves a range of household incomes and types. Now that you have additional information about architecture, you may also be interested in related presentations about two other important aspects of creating complete communities, community planning and urban design. Each of these three components is defined, described, and illustrated in these presentations sponsored by LA Metro in consultation with the American Institute of Architects.